I feel like I'm in a time machine. But this time around, we are not at the Thomas and Mac. We are at the T-Mobile Arena. This is the first time in 25 years these teams has played against each other. The Blue Devils are nine and one, and the Running Rebels are five and three. Tonight, a rivalry is renewed. Welcome back to Studio F on the campus of UNLV for this week's edition of the Rebel Report. We also want to thank those who found us on KCLV Channel 2. I'm Shakira Hawkins. College football is back and we're here at the Cosmopolitan for the annual Mountain West Conference Media Summit. We're here with UNLV and along with the rest of the Mountain West Conference teams and they all tell us why they're the best in the West before the season starts. UNLV football is back and we're here at day one in training camp. The UNLV program has some big goals. The NBA Summer League gives rookies the opportunity to showcase their skills, gain experience and have fun. I feel like I'm in a time machine, but this time around, we are not at the Thomas and Mac. We are at the T-Mobile Arena. This is the first time in 25 years these teams has played against each other. The Blue Devils are nine and one, and the Running Rebels are five and three. Tonight, a rivalry is renewed. The 1990-91 UNLV Running Rebels roster is considered one of the best basketball squad in college history. Fast forward to a new era, UNLV basketball is a completely new program with new head coach Marvin Menzies, while Coach K is in his 37th season as the head coach of the Blue Devils. Despite the Rebels losing against Duke, legendary sportscaster Dick Vitale still has high hopes for the future of Rebel basketball. Well, you know, you think about great tradition. Obviously, UNLV for years has had great tradition, and Duke five national championships, and 25 years they haven't met, but the talent level was such a difference maker. Obviously, Duke's got tremendous talent. It'll be a matter of time, but I believe Marvin Menzies will go out and get players. What a beautiful arena, too, to be part of it. it was really nice. The NBA Summer League gives rookies the opportunity to showcase their skills, gain experience, and have fun. Unfortunately, for the New Orleans Pelicans, they were forced to start the tournament with one less rookie star. The Pelicans honor former UNLV running rebel Bryce DeJohn Jones by wearing patches with his initials. We caught up with Bryce's former college and NBA teammate, Jamil McKay. Um, he was a video game freak on off the court. That's all he wanted to do was play video games and crack jokes all day. Just sit around and play video games. On the court, he was a competitor. He would do. He worked hard and he would do anything it takes to win. He is a team player for sure. McKay played with DeJon Jones during the 2014-2015 season at Iowa State before both players went undrafted and were later picked up by the New Orleans Pelicans. What special qualities do you think Bryce would have brought to this year's tournament? Um, just his hard work, um, his competitiveness. I think that he would have been one of the more competitive people out there on the court and displaying his skills. The Pelicans honored the DeJon Jones family with a tribute during Friday's halftime game. Bryce DeJohn Jones died of a gunshot wound May 28th in Dallas, Texas. DeJohn Jones began his college career at Southern California before transferring to UNLV. He then transferred to Iowa State for the 2014-2015 season, later to sign a three-year contract with the New Orleans Pelicans. And how does it make you feel to look down at the Bryce initials? Um, sometimes it can get, make me a little sad, honestly. It can because it makes, like, it reminds me that he's no longer here. But when I look down on it, I know I have a reason to do it for him. You know, that's like my brother. So it just always gives me motivation. After finishing first in the conference during the regular season, the ladies began the Mountain West Tournament in the semifinals. They easily proved that the hype was real, holding off Utah State with a 2-1 win. Going into the championship game against San Diego State November 5th, it was now clear why UNLV broke the record for most awards to one team in one season. We are so proud of these talented ladies. They faced BYU on November 11th in the first round of the tournament, and the Rebel Report will be there to cover it in our next episode. Rebel Report, time out. Hi everyone, our special guest today is men's golf head coach, Dwayne Knight. Hi coach, how are you doing today? Hi, nice to be with you. Good. You guys, you've been at the university for 30 years. That's longer than I've been alive. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> it I tell is. You. What's so special about UNLV that keeps you so invested and loyal to the university? 
Well, I, I think um, I got in on a lot of the growing of the university when I first came here, and that's, that was uh, exciting for me to see the town grow and the university grow at the same time. And I think the university is an integral part of the, of, of the city and, and of, the, um, of the future of what's going to happen to all the citizens here. So it's fun to be in on the ground floor of that. And sports is really uh, one of the big things of this town. And we've had a lot of success in the past uh, with so many sports getting to the highest level. And, you know, it looks like we're going to get an NFL team, an NBA, and mm -hmm. all of that. And this is a city that can support that. We've been lucky in our golf program. They've really stood behind us. And golf uh, started when I first got here for, with about 10 golf courses. And it exploded to over almost 60 at one time. So uh, golf itself has really grown here. And, and our team has benefited from uh, that growth. You guys started in September. You guys had the Thanksgiving break, mm -hmm. and then you guys start back up in February. How do you feel about your team this point in the season? Uh, played pretty well in the fall. Uh, we're ranked in the top 25 in all the polls, 17 in one, one of them. Um, we played uh, really well. We won, won our first one at Air Force, and then we uh, uh, went to Olympia Fields in uh, Chicago, which is one of the great courses. Mm -hmm. uh, hosted several U.S. Opens and PGAs there, and uh, we finished sixth in that field, mm -hmm. um, and that was the top teams in the country there. And we ended up um, uh, going to uh, uh, Alabama, our last tournament, and playing against Auburn and Alabama back in their part of the country in Florida, and, uh, and we ended up second there, losing to uh, Auburn by one shot. Mm -hmm. So uh, Johnny Oda got off to a good start. He won two of the four events himself. Uh, he's now ranked 22nd in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's a, a great honor for him. So I'm uh, pretty pleased with our start. I thought it was solid. And now I got to work on the grades, get those all mm -hmm. up to par, and, and hopefully uh, go into break uh, with them playing a few tournaments around the country and some around the world for them, um, and then get back in the spring and make a run at the national championship. Nice. You guys made it to the NCAA tournament last season. What do you expect? Uh, I think uh, with all those guys back, uh, We've got a couple of freshmen that are pretty good right now, too. Um, our goal is to get back there and compete. We've mm -hmm. gone to the uh, regionals for 28 years in a row, and that's an NCAA record. But our goal is to try to compete for the national championship. And uh, this year will be in Illinois at Rich Harvest Farms. We played there several times over the last few years, a really hard golf course. But uh, we, we tend to play well in Chicago, so maybe that will be a good omen for us to get back there and make a run at another national title. Do you see this team being a national championship? Cap are, are they capable, do you think? I think we've gotten uh, much better real quickly. Our depth is better this year. Um, I think uh, Harry Hall it just got named to the uh, Elite Nine in uh, England, and uh, that'll really help him with his experience. He's a, he was a freshman last year and sophomore this year, but he's really improved a lot. And our depth's a little bit better right now. And so. Um, I think it's a team that could make a run. Uh, that most of these guys are back from winning the conference championship last year. And uh, I think with, uh, with Johnny Oda and Shintaro Ban and Harry Hall, kind of the guys we got to really look toward, they, all of them having experience at the regionals should give us a good shot getting through that and back to the finals. How do you think Oda's success reflects on the golf program in the university? Well, I, I think he's a, an, an all-around, uh, all-American. You know, mm -hmm. he's really good in school. Uh, it's not easy for him. But he's really, he really concentrates and uh, uh, wants a degree and wants mm -hmm. to not just get a degree, but uh, you know, make good grades. And, mm -hmm. and uh, he's very productive, and I think that helps his golf game. Uh, he's not just trying to get by. I think all the great ones that we've had here, and we've had many, uh, like Adam Scott and Ryan Moore, and I, I think Johnny's one of those type of guys that uh, is going to give his very best at whatever's in front of him. And, and I, that's what the best in the world do, and uh, I think he's got a good career ahead of him, but I know he's focused on getting UNLV back to the top. Right. Um, recently, golf legend Arnold Palmer passed away. Can you um, tell us about his legacy on the sport of golf and your relationship with him. Well, I was very fortunate uh, a few years back. Uh, he started a competition between Europe and the United States with uh, co college players. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was called the Palmer Cup. Mm -hmm. And I w he picked me to be the first coach of that team. It's been over 20-something years now that they've, they've run that competition. But it was a great honor for me to go down there and spend that week with him at Bay Hill. And uh, to tell you a quick story about him, I called him up before the event and I said, uh, would you like to talk to our team in the locker room before we you know, go to the first round? And 
He said, well, let me call you back in about another day. I got to think about that. And he called me back and he said, Dwayne, I don't, I don't think that's the right thing to do. He said, if I uh, talk to you guys, then I'll have to talk to the Europeans. And I tell you what I'll do after you win. So no pressure <laughs> there, right? He says, uh, I'll talk to your guys. And, uh, and we did win and, and he came in and he was so gracious and told us how proud he was that uh, we won on America's soil, his home course in the very first Palmer Cup. So uh, mm. uh, golf lost, lost a legend, but he left so much of uh, a great track record behind him of building up people, building up the sport, and uh, really caring about, uh, I think, individuals, you know, across mm. the nation and the world. And he was a great ambassador for our game. Oh, nice. It looks like that's all the time we have today. I want to thank you so much for coming <laughs> here. And we're going to go ahead and toss it back to Lindsay at the desk.